welcome back to my channel 5 minute economics where i teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes the topic for today is friedman's restatement of the quantity theory of money which is a little complicated topic but trust me i am here for you to help you simplify this also very complicated topic so coming to or talking about quantity theory of money i've already made a few videos on the keynesian version the cambridge version fisher's versions which were done earlier i'll attach all the links in the description below but later on we had milton friedman who was a monetarist economist those who came after the keynesian economists and milton friedman redefined that entire quantity theory of money with his uh, ideas so in this particular video we'll be talking about that redefined or restated um, you know theory and i'll be talking all about what you need to know about the theory be it diagrams be it assumptions all that you need to know, along with the criticisms so yeah let's get started also guys don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already and please do follow me on instagram on my handle 5 minute economics So firstly let me introduce this theory to you and give you a little background about this theory. This theory was formulated by Milton Friedman in the year 1956. He was a very famous monetarist economist working in the University of Chicago. So before this we had several theories of quantity theory which actually dealt with the fact that mv is equal to pt. This equation was told by the previous economist who said that if v and t being constant we will say with the increase in the money supply in an economy the prices tend to rise. Okay simple jaise jaise paisa bada prices bade. That is what they had said. But when the monetarist economist or particularly Friedman came into picture he said that is not what is true. in fact he said that this quantity theory is a theory for demand for money which was ignored it is not about output it is not about income and prices but it is about a demand for money and he said money can be of you know divided into two types maybe like an asset money can be treated as an asset or a capital good he also in his theory stated that demand for money is a function of variable uh, things so let us go through all the three sets Firstly, he said demand for money is a function of total wealth. A total wealth ko estimate karna is pretty difficult. It is divided among various assets, right? A person's wealth is divided. But he said that since it is difficult to you know find out wealth, we can call income as a surrogate for wealth. Secondly, he also said that wealth is divided into human and non-human factors. So non-human or human wealth kya hota hai human wealth is basically the productive capacity over one's lifetime maybe my skill my education that is my uh, you know human wealth whereas non human wealth maybe it might be like what money is put into capital machinery that is called non human wealth thirdly he also mentioned that the expected rate of return also affects the demand for money he said that you know the the rate of interest on bonds dividends and equities are also a function for the demand for money so i hope you are clear with the introduction or the background of this particular theory So moving ahead now so since Friedman had given a lot of due importance to wealth let us study what were the types of wealth or forms of wealth and how did he classify wealth into so number one easiest simplest money money is a very important uh, form of wealth money can be held in currency demand deposits time deposits however i'm sure you know about it so i'm not going in the depth of it Secondly bonds we you know bonds represent fixed kind of income bonds can be hnc bonds savings bonds treasury bonds several types of bonds thirdly equities equity kya hota hai basically you know the capital or you know the amount invested by the owner of a firm that is the equity next physical or non human goods that is also wealth for the firm whatever he has in excess like you know the inventories or consumer durables that is also his wealth the producer's wealth and lastly human capital which is the productive capacity of human your skill your knowledge is also a wealth so these are the various forms of wealth So moving ahead to the next bit of this theory so guys whenever you are stating this theory in an exam or any answer you have to remember certain equations number one equation is w is equal to y upon r which equation was given by friedman where w stands for the current value of the total wealth and y stands for the total flow of expected income from all the five forms of wealth which we just did and r is the rate of interest i'm sorry there's no simple way which i can help you with this equation it's an equation which you have to remember w is equal to y upon r which actually represents that wealth is like capitalized income what is capitalized income basically future income of any asset is known as capitalized income this is what friedman had said 
he also then showed us that how is the or what is the demand function of an individual wealth holder which means that a individual ki wealth kis kis cheez pe dependent hogi okay so here we have this equation which you have to also remember where m stands for total stock of money demanded and p of course the price m upon p is equal to what all does it depend upon number one of course income the real income what is real income guys the inflation adjusted income Secondly, it depends upon W, which is the wealth in non-human form. Next, the three are very simple, which we just did the forms of wealth. R M stands for expected rate of return on money. Uh, R B stands for expected rate of return on bonds. R E stands for expected rate of uh, return on uh, equity. And G P G stands for goods. You know, whatever change of prices of goods. And lastly, U is any other variable apart from income, which you know affects the demand for money so this equation along with this equation has to be written on an answer because he moved the entire quantity of theory in terms of wealth so i hope you are clear with this. so moving ahead to the diagrammatic explanation of the quantity theory of money i have tried my best to simplify this very diagram for you so firstly guys you have to understand that under friedman's theory the money supply and money demand are independent of each other okay money supply is relatively unstable because monetary authorities ke hath mein hoti hai money supply whereas money demand is considered to be relatively stable okay so here when we notice that supposedly if money supply increases how can rbi or any central bank increase the money supply they can do so by purchasing securities and then people they will give money in the hands of the people by purchasing securities so in that way the income of the people will rise right when they will purchase securities so that is how what he has represented diagrammatically on this curve so we have demand and supply of money on the x axis axis whereas you know income on the y axis initially we notice so firstly let me introduce you to the curves md is a demand for money curve whereas uh, ms uh, both ms actually ms1 and ms are the money supply curve which is straight line vertical and parallel to y axis since it's perfectly inelastic so initially we can see md and ms intersect at this point which is the equilibrium point right this is the e point and at this point we have our income as y supposedly the you know the central bank it increases the money supply so what happens is then our supply curve shifts rightward and we see now it's m1 s1 is a new supply curve which intersects with md at e1 point which is a new equilibrium and if we come you know parallel to on the y axis we get our new income which is higher than the previous income so this is basically what you know friedman wanted to show he brought in the quantity theory of money in terms of lot of money demand money supply rather than any other thing prices output anything so he focused on money demand and money supply particularly and how the money supply raising the money supply will increase the income of the people so lastly guys moving ahead to the criticisms of this theory of course any theory be it the best theory in the world is always criticized so this theory by milton friedman was also criticized compared to the friedman uh, to the keynesian theory and there were many economists who were not happy with this theory so number one they said that they have given very broad definition of money money may you know a currency time deposit sab kuch include kar diya so that's why they said that they have given way too broad definition of money secondly they said that you have given too much importance to wealth rather than that income should have been given importance but wealth is considered very important under this theory which is not right thirdly money supply is not exogenous so they have considered money supply as exogenous you know like central bank and other monetary authorities they affect the money supply they had said that but here you know it was criticized that money supply is not exogenous in fact next ignores the effect of other variables on money supply the effect of income effect of prices if other effects were completely ignored and lastly they did not consider time factor like how much time does it take to change the money supply that was completely ignored in this theory so though you know there are few criticisms likewise in every theory but this theory is one of the most important theories it said that after keynesian theory you know if given importance this theory is the one which is given importance so i hope i was able to simply if i this theory for you if you did like this video comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video pretty soon